Jonathan Fletcher and his students Aiden, Ashton, and Mandy, Jeffrey, Joel, and Hannah to the stage to tell us more about their project. Hello, my name is Mandy Dyka, and we are so excited to be here. Uh, we are students from Port Colborne High School, and that is part of the District School Board of Niagara or the DSBN. And we were in Mr. Fletcher's Grade 11 Geographic Spatial Technologies course last semester. In Grade 9 Geography, Mr. Fletcher always tells his classes that geography is not colored on maps. Geography is connected to the real world. He introduced us to the ArcGIS platform, including mobile, online, and desktop. And he showed my class as we story works. He showed us how these tools can be used to solve real-world problems and help people. And the idea of being able to do those things excited me. So I, along with my classmates, took Introduction to Spatial Technologies, where we learned how to use ArcGIS and how it can be applied to solve real-world problems, like creating maps for an outdoor education center. Outdoor education centers are important for learning. The DSPN Adventure Campus is an outdoor education center, but the 60-acre campus located uh, in Caramelian Forest on the border of Shorthands Provincial Park. It gives students from kindergarten to grade 12 the opportunity to explore, discover, and play in a natural learning environment. And approximately 8,000 students go to the program there per year. In August 2018, Colin Fast, the coordinator of outdoor recreation with the District School Board of Niagara, wanted to have accurate maps of the campus, including trail markers and assets. Our teacher was approached because he was involved with a similar project in 2015, and he decided to undertake this project with our Spatial Technologies class. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashton Jeffs. In order to generate concise maps, we first need to collect accurate points. To do so, we need to require professional survey equipment, as our cell phones are only accurate to 6 meters. Our class chose the Trimble Catalyst to collect our points, because of its accuracy, mobility, and affordability. With a cost of $500, it quickly depleted our school's budget. Port Colburn High School is a public high school, and as you know, our funding is very limited. We now search for a way to require a survey poll to pair with this device without the necessary funding. So our teacher, Mr. Fletcher, contacted Maureen Montjoy from the Association of Ontario Land Surveyors in the help of acquiring a survey poll. Is Maureen in the audience today? No? Okay. <laughs> oh. Hi, Maureen. Maureen asked the members of AOLS for assistance in acquiring survey goals. This turned out to be a great success. We'd like to give a big thanks to retired Ontario land surveyor Bruce Pettit and Mohawk College technologist Matthew Shelley who generously donated two survey polls. We'd also like to give a big thanks to Harold Hyde, Ontario Land Surveyor of Rashes Hyde Limited, for providing us with the necessary funding to purchase three additional Trimble Catalysts and two additional survey polls. The Trimble Catalyst paired with an Android device is able to collect points accurate to one meter. But thanks to Brock Kingston from Cancel, he was able to convince Trimble to generously donate four three-month precision subscriptions for free. Is Brock in the audience? Over there. Hey, Brock. <laughs> this enabled the Trimble to collect points accurate to the center. This is the first of its kind for Trimble to donate these high precision subscriptions to a school for free. We'd like to give a special thanks and round of applause to all of our sponsors who made this project a reality. Catalyst can only work with Android devices, meaning only two usable phones. 
Luckily, we managed to find two other Android phones to use. To harness the power of ArcGIS, the first step in collecting our data is using Survey123 for ArcGIS to create an empty feature service, which includes the location and the image, description, accuracy, and notes for each point. This empty feature service was then added to an ArcGIS online map. We then set off to download the apps needed to record our points. We use the collector for ArcGIS alongside Survey123 to record and display our data. Using the Android phone's developer options, we are able to set up a triple catalyst of the mock location map. Using the triple mobile manager, we connect to the precision license to the phone. From there, it was easy to set up the triple catalyst as an external recording device, setting the height to 2 meters and a minimum accuracy to 1 meter. After a few test runs, the class was ready to roll. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kendall Walker, and I'll be discussing our experience during the trip to the Adventure Campus. Working outside of the classroom using Esri software and professional survey equipment was a valuable and engaging experience to help to expose us to career possibilities in the geospatial technology field. We decided to go to the campus on April 29 to make sure there were no leaves on the trees that may reduce the accuracy of the GPS signal. At the campus, we split up into four teams each with a different responsibility survey, such as emergency signs throughout the site, assets such as stairs and boardwalks, and a team for each trail, the True North Trail and the Ridge Trail. At first, we had some troubles running both the collector for ArcGIS and the triple services at the same time. But once we checked a little box to allow the service to run with other applications, we were good to go. Even worse, one of the phones had not been charged up prior to the trip. <laughs> Luckily, we squeezed in the last point before the battery died with the help of a small battery pack attached to the triple. From what Mr. Fletcher tells me, that's exactly what field work looks like. Everything running exactly as planned. <laughs> for each point, we use our collector for ArcGIS to record the coordinates, the surveyor, and a brief description of the point. By the end of the first trip, we had collected the first round of data. Although there were some inaccurate and incomplete points, the game is a place to start for the next trip to the campus on May 16th. The difference in the area from New Grove was surprising. Not all the students could miss another day of classes, and so we brought a much smaller portion of the class to the Adventure Campus the next time. Despite having smaller teams, the lessons we learned from the challenges we faced the first time allowed the second trip to be a more efficient process, which helped us to collect all the data needed for the trails on site and allowed us to go even further in a short time to Adventure Park. Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey Jensen, and I'll be talking about how our teacher, Mr. Fletcher, integrated this problem into our spatial technologies class at Fort Homer High School. Once we complete our field work, we gathered all the points from each of our four teams onto one map by using Survey123. From there, we converted the points into shape files, which we could then import into ArcGIS Desktop 10.6. The day after our first field trip to the Adventure Campus, everyone in our class had the opportunity to clean up the data we collected and draw materials and assets by connecting our survey points with the curve line tool. Essentially, we play connect the dots. Very accurate, one centimeter dots, mind you, horizontally and vertically thanks to the triple precision subscription. Now we have a few points that are measured improperly due to human error, like an emergency sign that was surveyed inaccurately as being down the road, and a few trail points are placed in the field over. These small pickups are wired and going back to the metric campus, but the second time is much smoother we were able to survey the entire Hamlet Valley Trail on the second trip. In class, we then redrew the trails, emergency signs, and assets like the boardwalks, buildings, and the parking lot. Also, as an assignment in our geotechnologies class, everyone had an overall map of the adventure campus and a close to one of the trails. This is my favorite assignment for the course because we're working with a real-world problem, which is to create accurate maps for a real outdoor education center. Hi, my name is Aidan Hopkins. The next step in our project was to finalize the design of our maps, making sure we had a uniform mapping convention and color scheme. In our class, Mr. Fletcher gave us the requirements for the map designs. To make things interesting, a competition was held in the class with the best maps created uh, to be used by the campus. From the 22 students, our maps were selected as having the best balance of both function and design. Overall, we decided to select qualities from a variety of our maps 
such as color schemes, symbol choice, drawing trails, and assets. To, to ensure a professional look, all maps were given uniform mapping conventions to maintain consistency across all of the maps. Two maps were created that showed the entire campus. One posted and counted on the wall, and one handheld version. As well, three maps that showed each of the trails in detail. After completing the maps, the final layers were uploaded in, as a web application into ArcGIS Online. By uploading the trails, assets, and emergency markers into this web app, it allowed for more seamless communication between staff. For example, if a staff member were to notice a broken board or a tree down, they could take a picture, geotag it for the meeting staff to fix that at a later time. In cleaning the mapping and filtering the DSD and Adventure Campus, we saw the purpose of our work outside of the classroom. And that, our actions have made a positive contribution by creating accurate maps for the Dishes School Road and Agri's Adventure Campus. This experience has opened our eyes variety of aspects of field work and professional level mapping projects. It has given us valuable experience and idea in the future careers. To end, we'd like to once again thank everyone who made it possible for a high school class to utilize precision equipment and complete field work. We know it made a difference for students learning in the outdoors. Finally, we encourage you all to take an interest in, your, with work, in working with your local schools, as well as becoming a GIS ambassador. Share your time, talent, and love of geography and geospatial spatial technologies with all future geographers in the making. Thank you. Thanks very much, guys, and congratulations, I think you've done a fantastic job. It always, always blows me away how confident these guys can get in front of 11 to 1200 GIS professionals have been doing it for 30 years and they make us all look a little, uh, a little silly. So, congratulations. <laughs> Good job, guys. So, I get the honor to wrap things up. We're almost ready for lunch. So, I've just got a couple of very quick announcements and a couple of quick closing thoughts. So, number one, please, please, please give us your feedback on how you like the new format for this morning. I absolutely loved it. I know a lot of people on social media are talking about how fantastic having obviously the students up is always great. The AOE is always really important.